This song is called 10,000 Years. Soon I'll come to the end of my journey and I'll meet the one who gave his life for me. I will thank him for the love that he gave me. And ten thousand years or more, I'll praise his name. Ten thousand years will just be started. Ten thousand years and we've just begun. The battle is over and the victory is won. Ten thousand years and we've just begun. We will just begin to sing love's sweet story. It's a song that the angels cannot sing. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Savior, and ten thousand years or more, I'll praise His name. Ten thousand years, and we'll just be started. Ten thousand years, and we've just begun. The battle is over, and the victory is won. Ten thousand years, and we've just begun. Ten thousand years, and we'll just be started. Ten thousand years, and we've just begun. The battle is over, and the victory is won. Ten thousand years, and we've just begun. Ten thousand years, and we'll just be started ten thousand years and we've just begun the battle is over and the victory has been won ten thousand years and we've just begun when redeemed I stand over in the promised land with the mighty blood washed strong I will sing redemption song in ten thousand years and we've just begun ten thousand years and we'll just be started ten thousand years and we just begun the battle is over and the victory's been won ten thousand years and we've just begun ten thousand years and we'll just be started ten thousand years and we've just begun the battle is over and the victory's been won ten thousand years and we've just begun when redeemed I stand 
over in the promised land with the mighty blood was strong i will sing redemption song and ten thousand years or more i'll praise his name ten thousand years and we'll just be started ten thousand years and we've just begun the battle is over and the victory is what been won ten thousand years and we've just begun ten thousand years and we've just begun oh yes dear god oh dear lord how wonderful to know Oh, yes, that we we'll, we'll have only just begun to sing your praises after 10,000 years. Oh, what a wonderful place that heaven will be. Oh, I can imagine singing for 10,000 years without even stopping. And yet we'll have millions and millions of more years to go and left. And so who would mind singing for 10,000 years? Without stopping, I wouldn't, you know, especially when we have the energy of God, we'll have all that power and that energy and all that love that he gives us, and we'll see him. And just one glimpse of Christ in glory, with one glimpse of his face, will energize us to sing for 10,000 years. You know you see one glimpse of Jesus' face, and you're not going to stop singing for 10,000 years. And then you're going to stop a minute and start it over and, and sing it over again. Oh, yes, I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's going to be so marvelous that we won't even know that 10,000 years is passing. We'll, be, we'll just be singing to Jesus. Oh, my, we won't have to have, we won't have, to have no watches. <laughs> we won't have to be thinking about how much space we have on here. <laughs> Or whatever, you know, like uh, some people have said, you know, that they're, they're afraid they're going to run out of battery if they're doing it on their cell phone. I'm not doing it on the cell phone, but <laughs> we don't have to be afraid that we're going to run out of our ba battery and then it won't be, it'll cut off in the middle or something. Uh, but we'll have 10,000 years to go. Oh, yes, you know. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I won't even have to talk, I'll just sing. <laughs> So it said, um, it said 10,000 years. When we come to, I assume I'll come to the end of my journey. Oh, yeah, it'll happen fast. And I'll meet the one who gave his life for me. He lived and died for me and for others like me. And uh, I'll, he said, I will thank him for the love that he gave me. The love, the gift he gave me. And 10,000 years or more, I'll praise his name. You know, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, for 10,000 years, it's going to go on and get louder and louder. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, I'm sure there'll be all kinds of dancing in the spirit and jumping and shouting. Oh, we won't be we won't be singing it quietly either. <laughs> we won't be singing it under our breath or singing in the key of low, so low you can't hear. Everybody will be singing out. <laughs> we'll probably be clapping our hands and everything else. <laughs> oh, wow! Well, I can't wait to see that. Oh, whoa! Oh, it won't be no, there won't be nobody out of energy, out of time, and out of mind. <laughs> no, no, nobody run out of patience or anything else. Okay, so it says, um, <laughs> won't be anybody looking to, to watch to see how long the preacher's going to go on. <laughs> uh, so it says 10,000 years. We'll just be started. 10,000 years, we've just begun. 
the battle is over and the victory has been won, you know. Oh, my God has seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is wrapping out the village where the grapes of wrath are stored. All of that battle will be over and the victory will be all totally won and 10,000 years and we will have just begun. We will just begin to sing love's sweet story. Oh, it's going to take us 10,000 years just to start on singing love's sweet story. That'll be the second 10,000 years. <laughs> Or we'll be singing it with our new capabilities. We'll be singing Love Sweet Story at the same time that we're praising his name. <laughs> and it'll take 10,000 years to, to get through singing that love story. Oh, man. I mean, or to get through talking about it, singing about it, and everything else. Okay, so it says, uh, 10,000 years we'll just begun singing the Love Sweet Story. It's a, it's a song that the angels cannot sing because they wasn't redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You know, we'll have a song that will be so sweet that the angels will be envious of it. <laughs> and, and God will he see fit. <laughs> Jesus will come in there and say, I am giving you all voices that are a thousand times greater than the angels so you can out sing them about the blood of Jesus. And we'll start singing about the blood of Jesus and we'll out sing all the angels. Because <laughs> we'll have the capability because we are blood bought Christians. <laughs> and we will sing 10,000 years about the blood of Jesus. I'm telling you. Oh, <laughs> Oh, and so, uh, yes, uh, we want to remember the blood. Don't take it out like they do on some of the versions. And so we will, it says we will, uh, the angels can't sing that though. I'm redeemed by the, the uh, song that, that the angels cannot sing. I quote, I am redeemed by the blood of the Savior. Blood bought. And 10,000 years or more, I'll praise his name. Well, I'm glad they did put that or more, you know, because I don't think we'll be through in the 10,000 years. Because, I mean, that'll just be like 10 seconds up there. You know, and so we won't be through uh, in the 10,000 years. And so, uh, and then it says, when redeemed I stand, oh, Redeemed I stand over in the promised land with the mighty blood washed strong. I will sing redemption song and that will be in 10,000 years or more. I'll praise his name. 10,000 years. Let's see. We will sing. I will sing redemption song 10,000 years or more, I'll praise his name. So, what a marvelous, marvelous thing, you know, to think about all that. I mean, to tell you, oh, I get so fed up with that clock a lot of times. Just seems to, seems to just spin and spin and spin, you know. And <laughs> there's not a day goes by <laughs> that I don't wake up full of energy and and I'm already saying, I'm going to do a dozen videos today, an hour apiece. <laughs> I'm going to get with it. I'm, I'm going to put all of these. I mean, I am going to put some stuff on here, you know. I'm going to just really stack the videos up where they'll be. Uh, everything will be in there. I'm just going to talk from the time I get up to the time I go to sleep. <laughs> I won't need to eat or anything. <laughs> and then I get up and, and that clock starts spinning and it gets later and later. I have to do the chores and then every time I get them done, that thing is spun a bunch of times and then I'm going to fix food. And then <laughs> it just keeps going like that. <laughs> and then I count myself lucky that I got a couple of videos <laughs> before the day is over. And then I'll start that way again the next day. I'm going to do a dozen videos today. <laughs> and and, I, and there was a time, you know, it was a year uh, 
four years ago, about four years ago, four or five years, five years ago now, about five years ago when I was first started doing this, that, that I did do that many. You know, I, I did do it. Maybe I need to recall how I did that. <laughs> I did do 10 or 12 of them. You know, and they were, how long a piece were they? I guess I just made them 50. Yeah, they were 15 minutes a piece. But there was a, like a dozen. And I just, just kept doing them. And what I did then was I got up about 5 o'clock or something like that. And 4 or 5 o'clock. And I, I fixed my total breakfast. It was eggs and pancakes. And... Uh, well, what else? There's a bunch of stuff on that. The more than I eat now, it was uh, yeah, eggs and pancakes, and there was peanut butter, and uh, there was uh, some rolls, I think. And I'll have to look back at the videos because I've got it on the video. Shows what all I had there. I had a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, peanut butter was stacked here. The jelly was stacked over here, and uh, and then I had all of my, you know, you know, my supplements that I take. Uh, they were all around here, and, and all of that was right there. And, uh, well, what I did was I, I fixed all of that together, the, the eggs and the, and the toast and, the, and the, uh, uh, the meat and whatever it was, to eat, the whole thing, and I put it all inside of, you know, one of these uh, carryouts, a uh, styrofoam deal. And put it all in there and close it. And if I needed two, I'd use two to get it all. And, and I had it all ready before the sun even come up. You know, had all it all ready, stacked like this. Made the coffee, fixed it all. Had that all, had all that ready. And then I would set it down. I would carry it to an out, another office that I have. And I would set, put it in a, a reg, an office, regular, uh, another one. And then I... Uh, would put it all there on the desk and spread it out and turn all turn this this all on and I had this other program that I was watching along with it sometimes while I was listening while I was uh, eating and and then I was doing uh, the videos and all at the same time I was doing uh, I was doing a, a whole lot of uh, 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 multitasking and and multi dexterous stuff you know and uh, and so I had it all but I had it all ready to begin with it was all organized. You know, I've sort of lost my organization, but I got it all organized, and so I, I would just, you know, I would start the uh, the video rolling, and then I would just start eating, and I'd be talking a little, and, and and doing some writing, and putting some notes up there, and all like this, and then and then in between there, I was letting somebody else do some talking, and I was doing that, and for 15 minutes, and then I'd stop it and up upload that, and then I'd start the next one, and and I did that, you know. From early that morning till late that evening, and uh, I would get uh, like tw a dozen videos up, and so I got uh, uh, over 500 of them up in just uh, I don't know what was it six eight months a year maybe a year something like that I got them all up yeah well, yeah it was like a year and a half but because I uh, <laughs> after a few months I started slowing it down so and um, but I did that. But that clock, you know, it, it didn't seem to spin the way it does now. And <laughs> it had spun a little, but not as much as now. And so, anyway, so 10,000 years, and we'll just be started. And uh, uh, then, and so we won't have to worry about all that, how fast or, or how, how to, uh, to get all that in, or how to get all those videos in, in a day's time, and all that, you know. And so, but... Uh, we need to uh, start our Bible lesson. It is now, let's see, it is now 6 p.m. Central Standard Time in the United States of America. 6 p.m. here in North America. We are located here between Mexico and Canada, and we're here every evening, rain or shine, at 6 p.m. And uh, we'll always be here. And we're doing the video, and if anything gets delayed due to the internet being down or something, then just immediately it'll, it'll all be ready to go as immediately as soon as it comes back home. But that doesn't happen very often, so uh, we'll be here uh, every uh, every uh, early afternoon, uh, early evening, late afternoon, at whichever you prefer, at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And so 
we are, but we are doing an exposition of the New Testament. And boy, I tell you what, you know, when I get to reading that New Testament and everything, boy, it's it's, it's an exciting thing, especially in view of. And I didn't know this was going to happen, but singing this song about heaven and everything, getting all excited about it, singing these songs before I start reading the New Testament, it gets me in the mood part. You know, I pray first. And then, you know, I pray for the anointing, I pray for, for wisdom and understanding and ability to teach it and all. And then that gets me started some. And then I sing these songs. And, and then by the time I get to that New Testament, I am just, oh, I'm telling you, it's just, it, it, he just opens up the word and it gets so exciting. I want to just keep on going the rest of the night, you know. And I'll start saying, why did I let the clock spin? <laughs> why didn't I get started earlier so I could go longer? And uh, so, uh, but. We, uh, as I said, that we're doing the exposition of Matthew, and right now we're in chapter, uh, well, I said we're doing the exposition of the New Testament, and right now we're, we're, uh, we're studying the book of Matthew, and we're in chapter 10, verse 15 is where we left off, and so we're going to start right there, and, uh, because I know that other people's time is precious too and so we got to get to it you know so because they, they may not have time you know to go through a bunch of stuff so we'll go to uh chapter 15 uh chapter uh excuse me chapter 10 verse 15 and it says barely i say unto you it shall be more tolerable for the land of solomon and gomorrah in the day of judgment and for that city, and he's talking about, what he was talking about was he's talking about if you go into a city and, the, you know, the whole city rejects the gospel and, you know, they're too steeped in something else and, and they reject your message, you know, and uh, they'll, uh, you know, start spreading the word. All oh, these people are here, you know, uh, uh, teaching this new uh, religion or whatever it is. And so everybody will be ready for them and they'll either lock their doors or they'll throw their water out or something at them and, and so uh, he said, if that happens to you and th that city rejects you, when you leave, he said, uh, shake the dust off of your feet on the way out and uh, don't, you know, leave a, don't leave a blessing, you know, don't bless them for their intolerance, you know, but just shake the dust off your feet, which was a sign to them people then that, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I am, uh, uh, wiping myself clean of you, you know, <laughs> and so, uh, he, uh, and, uh, so he said, do that and on your way out and then just head on to the next city and find those that will accept the message. And so, and, and then he says, those that didn't accept it, it was going to be more tolerable for them, uh, than it was for so Sodom and Gomorrah. It was going to be more tolerable for for Sodom and Gomorrah than, uh, than it is for those cities, which uh, tells you that he considers the rejection of the gospel as a pretty serious thing. So, uh, and he said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, uh, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves, you know, so, uh, you know, like, uh, if you consider the nature of the sheep and everything, that they just follow the shepherd and they're just, uh, the sheep are real calm animals and they're just concerned about grazing and that's all, and they're just out there grazing, they're not even suspecting any wolves or anything, but if they're, but if they're, if they end up, you know, the, Shepherd walks off and leaves them. They end up uh, out uh, straying off and getting out into a pack of wolves or something. Of course, uh, those wolves just tear them to pieces. You know, of course, I, <laughs> I used to have some great Pyrenees dogs, you know, they put out with uh, stock and everything to you know, protect them. And, and they look just like uh, oversized sheep, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, <laughs> and they're so big, you know, I mean, so well, just great big, you know, and uh, when they stand up, you know, I mean, they're like six foot almost, you know, and uh, or more, and, <laughs> and, uh, and so they'll be out there, and uh, 
some uh, wild dog or coyote or wolf or something will come along and <laughs> and they might be laying down or something, you know, looking like a sheep. <laughs> and all of a sudden they rise up. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, I, that's not <laughs> They get the smell of that or something. And that's not, that's not any sheep there. <laughs> and, and, of course, the, the great the dog, the great pair of the dog, they don't have to do. They don't have to actually attack. They just stand up and look at them. And that's enough. <laughs> Some of them, oh, I'll tell you what. Some of them, the males, you know, you know, I had some of them I had was females and all, and uh, and but uh, the, those males, well, I tell you what, I've seen some around giant, the, you know, the real giant male, the males, mean looking suckers. I'm telling you, you know, and uh, they, you know, they, they'd come, they, but they just come walking up, you know, real slow. But when you looked at them, you think, well, I don't think I'm gonna mess with that. And uh, so you put them out there with your with your uh, with your sheep and your cattle and everything. If you've got a problem with, you know, wild hogs or or a problem with uh, coyotes or wolves or something like that. But this says that he's going to send them out in the midst of wolves. He said, I'm telling you right now, when you go out there, you know, it isn't like it is now. Where it's, especially, you know, uh, when uh, the churches used to go. Uh, more than they do now, and knock on the doors and everything. I mean, it was all just, you know, a nice greeting, and then, you know, a lot of times they'd bite you in, maybe serve you tea and everything. You'd sit there and talk, and you'd tell them about Jesus and everything. Just a real nice little little deal, and just every once in a great while, you'd get some, that person get a little nasty or something. But most of the time, it was all went real well. Uh, but they wasn't like that where they were sending them. They were sending them out uh, 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 into a place where they had no concept of God or, or anything, or either that or, well, let's see, that would be later with the Gentile. With the Jews, they were sitting out among the Jews, which didn't believe in Jesus. And so, uh, like, I guess what, it, what he's talking about is those that, that were taking the teaching of the scribes and the Pharisees are among the scribes and Pharisees that were the ones that were for crucifying Jesus and you know how he described them like a, a, a whited uh, whited sepulchers on the inside but being wolves they would uh, they, they, you know they would just tear these people up that tried to witness about Jesus and so he said he sent you I'm sending you out among wolves so you have to be uh you had to be a wise as a serpent, but harmless as doves, you know, to figure out which ones are wolves and which ones are not, you know, be wise enough to know which ones are wolves and which ones are the real sheep, and then be gentle with, as a dove with those people until you can win them to the Lord. And so it says, and, uh, Wise as serpents and harmless as dust. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Yeah, see, that's what it is, you know, the midst of wolves, because they didn't believe in the gospel and they, they, uh, they thought that a lot of them thought that it was, uh, that it was against their religion, against the Judaism and so forth. And, uh, and against the teaching of the synagogue and everything. So he said they would deliver them up, turn them in to the uh, councils, and then scourge them in the synagogues. And, and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. For my sake, for a testimony against them. You shall be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake for a testimony against them in the Gentiles. Okay, so, you know, uh, brought before them and then if they uh, didn't treat them right, then that would be a testimony against them. You know, they, they would, um, you know, they re would reject Christ and then that would go against them in the judgment day. And so uh, it says, um, 
And when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. You know, and so that tells you that, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to be there, you know, to, and it's the same way with us. If we pray, we pray before we go and witness, then the Holy Spirit is going to go with us and he's going to prepare the way and he's going to tell us who are the, uh, who are the wolves <laughs> and who are the sheep and who are ready and who are not. And he's going to tell us how to be wise and serpents and how to be harmless and dumb. And all that is going to just flow naturally like it should if we pray the right way and get ready before we go and witness so that the Holy Spirit can go with us. That's what he's saying. And then if you get into uh, delivered up into a, uh, a nasty argument or something, you'll know what to say, exactly what to say and how to exit when the time comes and all those things. So it says, Uh, for it is not ye that speak, but the, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you, you see, so it won't be them that speaketh, and it won't be us that speak. If we're prayed up and you have the Holy Spirit working in our lives, we're full of the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, sanctified into the Holy Spirit. It's going to be God speaking through us. And we need to make sure that it is God speaking through us. If we get off into idle, <coughs> idle arguments <coughs> over nothing, then that's not God speaking through us. But if we just stick with the Bible and stick with the word and stick with the plan of salvation and stick with the witnessing and so forth, uh, then, you know, being friendly all the while and all like that, but sticking with the mission and with the word, then it'll be God speaking in us and that word will not return void. You know, if they don't make a decision right then, that word will be on their heart and it'll do its work and then somebody else comes along later, you see, and then <laughs> speaks to them again about it and sooner or later that word is going to, uh, to begin to <coughs> do its work and it's not going to return unto, uh, unto God void. It'll be the word of God. And so he says, uh, and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the uh, father the children, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Oh, let me see. How did that flow into that? All right, that seemed like it jumped. But when they deliver you up to you, for it is not ye that speak, but the uh, Spirit of the Father which speaketh in you. And, uh, but, uh, you know, a part of what will happen, okay, so if they, uh, okay, they might, perhaps, you know, what they're doing is, as he's saying is, you know, uh, if you win somebody to the Lord, well, at that time when they were against Christ and everything, like they were then, then uh, when they would talk to somebody about the Lord and everything, uh, then a brother, one of the, one brother would accept Christ uh, or, or accept their testimony and then somebody else wouldn't and then one brother would decide that it was serving God to deliver that brother up you know that and like the Judaism uh, the Jews that didn't believe in, in Christianity would deliver their um, I, I don't think that the Jews do that though you know that same way but if you if you uh, move forward into the uh, the present time, we have a lot of that kind of thing going on now, you know, where the, the children, you know, are, the, are turning against their parents and everything. And it was spoken of as something that was going to happen in the last days. And then you had stuff like that that happened during Nazi Germany. You had stuff like that that happened during communist Russia and all like that. When all those kinds of things happened, 
and he's just saying that uh, some of that kind of same kind of thing might happen uh, between brothers and fathers and daughters when they start drawing the line between who's going to go with Christ and who's going to stay uh, and reject him. So, say, uh, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. You know, and so there he's telling them that uh, because of them going out in testimony, make, uh, testifying about Jesus and trying to win the lost to Jesus, trying to win people over to the kingdom that is coming, uh, presenting the gospel of the kingdom, that, that there would be those which would hate them because of that and see that is against what they believe. And so they would hate them for it. So he's warning them against that. And so, uh, but he says, uh, you know, if you endure this persecution, if you endure this persecution, then to the end, you will be saved. You know, and of course, that's uh, that is applying to enduring through the persecution uh, that is going on and through the. And, and enduring the people that hate you, and enduring the things that they're that they're doing to come against you, to per, to persecute you for your faith. And uh, I lost my screen. Uh, let's see. And now, okay, it's back. <laughs> I accidentally wiped my hand across something and, and I lost my screen, uh, but I got it back, and so no problem. And uh, it didn't ruin the, the video that much. And so, uh, and, but he was saying that being hated by every man for his name's sake, and that he that endure to the end shall be saved is uh, not referring to uh, saying that we are not saved by grace uh, minus works, that we're not saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, and that you're saved only by your endurance to the end. In other words, people will try to take that to mean uh, if you endure by remaining in a, uh, by, by, by remaining saved you know in a certain way or whatever is meant by that if you endure in a sense of you don't re, you don't turn your back on your initial salvation and you and you stay with that initial salvation until the end of your life then, you will be saved and you'll be you'll go to heaven. But that's not what this here is this saying because you are saved by grace and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. And once God gives you his grace of salvation, then he what he giveth, he giveth forever. The scripture says that. And he places that, that seed of God within your heart and that seed stays there and that seed will uh, will take root and grow and if it is slowed down or withers for a while it will always come back and so your salvation even though it's a tragic thing that you get away from church and everything and maybe you lose that original joy and all like that 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 seed is still there and you eventually come back to the lord and so forth like that and, and so the enduring to the end was talking about them enduring those that persecution which was they were going to have to uh to uh, uh to uh, put up with and endure for a certain length of time and then eventually they would overcome it in this life they would overcome that persecution and be and be saved in the sense of the bodily bodily salvation from uh you know from that from that 
persecution and from that time. Uh, so it says, uh, a lot of this is, okay, it says, and uh, then uh, when they when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another, for verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. You know, so it says, uh, you know, in other words, don't don't try to recreate the, uh, the will, but, you know, go by the gospel message as Jesus presented it and as he intended it and uh, continue, you know, persevere, you know, endure in the sense of persevering. And if you persevere uh, until all the persecution is eventually passed, then you will come out of it unscathed in, in the end as far as any permanent damage to your soul and so forth like that. And so in that sense, you see, uh, you will be eventually an overcomer. Like the song says, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. I do believe deep in my heart, we shall overcome someday. And so He's saying you will overcome that persecution someday if you will just just endure and you know and just persevere with it. And so we know, you know, that there's different kinds of salvation that's mentioned. There's temporal salvation and there's eternal salvation. But when Okay, so it says, go over and you won't have gone over all the cities. Uh, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. And it is enough for the disciple to be as his master. And so, uh, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house beings above, how much more shall they call them of his house whole? And so he says, you know, they've called me every name in the book. And so don't think that you're going to get by without being called some names too. But endure that name calling. And then you, you'll eventually realize that, as I say, sticks and stones can't hurt my bone. Uh, might hurt my bone, but names will never hurt me. Or something like to that effect. And uh, so he says, just go ahead and endure the being called those names and don't take personal offense to it. Um, and realize that they called Jesus so worse names than that. And so he says, uh, he really gets into some stuff. I'll tell you what, it gets to be. It gets to be a plow job. You got to really go through it. And, and he says, uh, it is enough for the disciple that he be as a master. Okay, so he says, um, fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and nothing hid that shall not be known. So he, he says, don't fear them because... The truth is going to win out in the end. His truth is marching on, and it's going to win out in the end. And all the deception and unscrupulous activity and underhandedness and all like that that we see some of which going on today is not going to to cause the church to go. It's not going to. It is going to fail against the triumphant church. And so the church is going to succeed and it's going to go through, and it's going to overcome, and all of this stuff that tries to come against it, he said, that it's not anything that won't be revealed in the end. All the deception will be revealed, and the people that teach the truth will be revealed, and everything that is hidden will be uncovered. All the deceit will be, the lid will be lifted off of it, and people will see it for what it is. So he says, uh, uh, 
what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. So he says, you know, magnify my name, magnify what I'm saying, speak it out, speak it out, don't, don't, don't put your light under a bushel, speak it out in the light. What you hear in the ears, preach upon the house top. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So he says, don't fear him. You know, he's, 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 he's fixing them. He's setting them up. He's uh, preparing them. He's giving them the preparation message. He's preparing them to know that it's not going to be easy. But if you will persevere if you will uh, hold out and keep preaching the gospel in other words just keep preaching the truth keep preaching the truth and keep telling people to keep magnifying the Lord keep talking about God keep talking about his salvation keep talking about the need to be born again keep talking about the need of revival in this country keep talking about the need of, of having a great healing revival a great revival of the joy of the Lord a great revival uh, in this nation that will bring it back to its knees of prayer and bring it back to its time of moral of good moral character bringing children up in the admonition of the Lord where when they leave they will grow up to be contained and continue in that and they will grow up as good model citizens and just keep preaching the truth and all of that will happen and then when the people try to come against you and they, they try to persecute the church take away the tax exempt status or whatever, or persecute you for teaching against abortion or something else like that, and then just keep persevering and everything will eventually come to light. And if we endure those things that are coming against us, then in the end, we will bring our country back to a place of being on a sound track uh, and where we understand what really is making our country great and get ourselves back on that firm foundation. So that's what he's saying. He's saying, keep preaching that truth until the gospel is spread. And then the gospel will be doing its job and people will be turning to the Lord. And then everything, as everybody begins to turn to the Lord, everything will be brought to light. So we're saying... Uh, fear them not what I tell you okay said and fear not them which kill the body and are not okay says are not two sparrows so far farthering and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father knowing it but the very hairs of your head are all numbered fear ye not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows so he's just telling us how valuable we are to god we're so valuable that he knows uh, uh every hair in our head and it's all numbered and everything see you know there again that goes right into healing and everything too and you know that god knows and, and god was willing and god wants to heal okay whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will i confess also before my father which is in heaven oh he gets to preach it boy i tell you what he really he really preaches it you know you can, if you want to be confessed before the father confess me before men you know don't be ashamed of me uh consider how much i love you and and love people enough to tell them the truth love people enough to preach the gospel to them oh <laughs> Oh, this is this is powerful. <laughs> it is it is cutting to the marrow. I'm gonna have to stop and digest a little of this and and, and uh, tend to some of my wounds from all the sharpness of the word of God. Cutting. <laughs> Boy, I've been telling you this is this is getting to be interesting in in a lot of ways, but <laughs> it's cutting at the same time. He is just, oh, I tell you what, I mean, this stuff that he has said here, 
Oh, boy, it really causes you. It really makes you think. You really have to stop and think about all this. Oh, man, you know. <clears throat> we got to confess him. And so I'm going to pray that we have the strength to do that. And uh, <laughs> I want to just keep going along with it and going on with it. But I, it might do me good, as I say, to stop and, and digest what, I, what I've already read here. And, uh, and also, I've already gone over time anyway. So it's time to pray. We're going to pray. Oh, Father, in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus, that you would bless us. You'd bless us and, and bring all these truths to our knowledge as to exactly what they mean and everything. And, oh, dear God, just help us, dear God, and give us wisdom and understanding. Help us to apply thy word. And, and, Lord, dear God, give us that light and that understanding now. And we pray for anyone, oh, dear God, that needs to know Jesus more, that you'll give them the encouragement to do so and help them to come to the Lord and help them to receive his message. And now we pray that send the Holy Spirit before us. And now we pray, dear God, as we witness you, give us the power to witness and send thy Holy Spirit before us now. And Lord, now we pray for anybody that's sick with cancer, that you'll heal every aspect of their cancer, heal anybody of their lung problems, dear God. Oh, dear God, and anything like COVID-19 or any leftover of, of that uh, vir viruses of any kind, just heal them of that now and heal them of all COPD, all, all emphysema, all lung problems whatsoever. Oh, just heal them, dear God, of any kind of asthma or any kind of allergy or any kind of uh, any, any kind of thing that would uh, would affect their lungs or, and heal them of any damage caused by smoking. Lord, that you would break off that habit of smoking, that they may not go back to it, and that you could re you could restore their lungs, dear God, and help them to breathe out marvelous air. And Lord, now we pray that you would help people over diabetes. Just heal them and balance out their blood sugar, balance out their endocrine system, or their pancreal functions and their kidneys and their heart and everything to keep everything the blood flowing all going right and in the right balance and now we pray dear god just heal them of any uh, any types of diabetes at all and lord now we pray that you'd heal people and give them a good strong heart heal them of any kind of heart disease dear god strengthen their heart strengthen their blood vessels strengthen their coronary arteries lord clean out the arteries dear god and help people not to have any low blood pressure or high blood pressure lord just have balance their blood sugar balance their blood circulation lord that they may have good mental functioning and good uh, ability to stay uh, to control their temperature against hypothermia or hyperthermia oh dear god that everything would just go within balance lord control hormones balance hormones in every way and lord heal people of any back pain now heal that guy which i was uh, uh i was reading his testimony or his uh, re prayer request about I was reading a prayer request about that man having severe uh, pain in his spine from some from a lot of, of hard work that he did with firefighting and all. Just heal him now, dear God. In the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus, heal him. I pray in the name of Jesus. And heal the others, Lord, and all the other prayer requests. All the many people that need to be healed. Oh, dear God, just touch them in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus. And heal people of, of back pain. And heal people, dear God, of scabies. Uh, uh, that the, uh, uh, that uh, a lot of the uh, uh, refugees and all have that type of rash and skin. And Lord, dear God, heal people of skin rash of every kind. And skin irritation of every kind. Heal people of a spinal meningitis, dear God, and a multiple sclerosis, dear God, and oh, dear God, of any kind of problem with uh, with shingles, dear God, and heal people, dear God, of any kind of bone problem, any kind of osteoporosis, dear God. Give them good solid bones, uh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, and Lord, uh, and uh, good solid uh, 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 joints, dear God. Heal people of any kind of joint pain, or inflammation of the joints, or any kind of arthritic pain, or rheumatoid arthritis, dear God, just heal them, and give them good strong bones and joints, good solid bones and solid joints, dear God, that they might dance in the spirit before you, and jump and shout before you, and jump and shout, and praise God, and now we pray, dear God, that you would just break people off of all, oh, dear God, heal people of lupus, dear God, and all their, the, the uh, effects of that dear god and, oh dear god let's say heal people of cancer and now we pray dear god now that you would just uh bring people lift people out of all addictions addictions to crack addiction to any kind of cocaine or heroin or fentanyl dear god or any kind of barbiturate being a barbital or or any of the opioids and, and any uh of the uh, methamphetamine door just just break that habit of methamphetamine oh dear god and just bring people up to a high 
place in thy love and thy joy and let them see that joy and that happiness and that peace and that power and that energy that is a thousand times greater than anything that any of these drugs can give them way far above any buzz or, or dear God or, or, or any uh, uh, rush or any speedy feeling or any high feeling or any mellow feeling or any good feeling or joy uh, any uh, 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 Feeling like that, dear God, it'll raise them above uh, that, so far above that, that they'll have no more desire for drugs of any kind. And Lord, we just pray that you'd break off that alcohol habit, that they can walk off from that from that bottle and never turn back to it. Lord, just heal them and heal their their liver now, just to heal people of liver problems, of cirrhosis caused by alcoholism. And Lord, just heal them, dear God, of hepatitis, uh, oh dear God, and all those kinds of things, dear God, and break off that alcohol habit. Now we pray that you'd break the cigarette habit, and they can lay the cigarettes down and walk off from them, break that, break that nicotine addiction, that nicotine, stop that nicotine withdrawal and break them off of it some so completely that they'll never remember it again or need for it. Oh, dear God, that raise every step to a high mountain of joy and thy love and thy power. And now, Lord, we just pray that you'd heal people of all depression, low feelings, feeling of isolation, feeling of if some may feel unwanted or some may feel isolated or some may be lonely or, or some may have fear or some may have doubts uh, or, or depressions or anxieties and all just lift them way above all those feelings uh, to thy, thy high joy. And Lord, now we pray you lift people out of all feeling of being oppressed by any group or, or, or by any, uh, uh, any relationship or any of the relatives or any of their family or being oppressed by, uh, by a status group or, or, or a class group or be oppressed by any other group of any kind, dear God, that you lift us them far way above them and let them know and let them see that we have overcome, that we have victory in Jesus and they're way above, we're way above on those eagle wings, way above all of this type of thing of victimology or being, uh, being uh, oppressed by anybody else, that we cannot be oppressed if God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, dear God, no weapons shall farm against us, shall prosper and we are be over here now overcomers and we have, have the victory and lord now we pray that you'll lead the people up above all uh, obsession with any habits of this life any that break off all addictions break off all withdrawal stop all withdrawal break off all addictions to everything and lord that we may not be obsessed by any earthly habit or any of these any of these physical habits dear god and now we pray you lift us up to that high mountain of joy way above all these things where we will Feel thy joy and thy energy and thy power that's a thousand times above any of these things. And Lord, now we pray. I just pray for our missionaries and our pastors and our leaders. Pray that our missionaries will have a great passion for the Lord. Oh, dear God, and a great evangelistic spirit. And they'll have the support they need. And they'll be protected against persecution. They're protected against anybody harm to themselves or their family. And oh, God, just protect them in every way. And give them that real evangelistic spirit, that real Holy Spirit. And oh, dear God, now we will protect our pastors and give them wisdom and understanding to lead the flock. Oh, dear God, protect all of our associate pastors and all of our assistant pastors, all of our youth pastors, all of our choir directors, youth directors. Oh, dear God, and all of our song leaders and music uh, directors, music pastors. And oh, dear God, just bless all the Sunday school teachers, dear God, and other teachers in the church, dear God, that they would be have the wisdom and understanding of God to teach their lessons and preach their sermons and so forth. And Lord, now we pray. Pray that you, you, you would bless our public school teachers and our private school teachers, private uh, universities and private colleges and all. Protect our professors and our teachers in our public schools. Oh, dear God. And Lord, just give them the wisdom and the understanding to bring the students up correctly, to appreciate this country and to respect this country. And Lord, to have the to teach them in the ways of the Lord and teach them, dear God, that they may know uh, how to conduct themselves as good citizens of this country and, and how to grow up with character and integrity and respect for the country and gratitude for this country. And help all the, the all, that's all the public school and all the private school and help all the university professors to have that same wisdom to know what will be for the good of the country and what will teach what kind of teaching is wisdom is real wisdom and what's not and lord now we pray dear god that you just protect all of our farmers and ranchers protect our farmers dear god again uh, protect all their their animals dear god and protect their crop if they get a good crop will come in Dear God, just bring it in on time, bring them to a good harvest, dear God, on time and everything. 
bring in that harvest this fall, bring in everything. Dear God, cause the rains and everything to be on time, cause the harvest to be on time. Dear God, cause the prices to be right. And then we pray for all of our ranchers, dear God, your protect all their cows and horses and their livestock, their goats or the sheep or any other livestock. And I would pray, dear God, that you just protect them against any kind of uh, vandalism or any kind of breaking in, uh, uh, trespassing upon their ranches and and getting in with, by, the, by uh, uh, in a illegal way, dear God, and, and tearing things up and going into the ranchers' houses down south down there. And Lord, dear God, that you would just protect them against all of that. And Lord, just uh, give them a, a wisdom and understanding to deal with it. And Lord, we pray that you would just protect them and give them great prosperity with their uh, and reward in their ranching life and lord now we pray dear god that you just protect all of our police officers lord protect them against any kind of violence any kind of aggression any kind of harm to themselves help them to be able to go home every night and help them to live out their life and live out their uh, their time as a as an officer as a policeman or a police sergeant or a police officer or a police lieutenant whatever they uh, a certain lieutenant or captain that they may be serving in dear god and they will have a rewarding career and accomplish a lot of things and accomplish a lot of uh, good for the law and order and have an end with a rewarding career and finish out their career with faithfulness and lord dear god now i just pray that you'd protect all of our congressmen and all of our other leaders in our country that have the wisdom and the understanding to lead this country and to pass the right law. And Lord, dear God, we pray that you just protect all of, the, all of our governors of all of our states, that they'd have wisdom and understanding to lead their states, all of our all of our city and county leaders and all and all of our state leaders, that they will have the abilities and the wisdom and the understanding to lead their prospective uh, positions and lead the people that are uh, that are. Uh, and to, and to serve well in their leadership positions. Dear God, give them the wisdom to do that. And we pray now that you protect our pets. Dear God, oh, dear God, just protect all of our our little animals, dear God, and protect all of them, uh, protect them against uh, any kind of a, a sickness or illness or anything. And Lord, just protect them against any kind of attack by wild animals. Protect them, dear God, against uh, uh, being attacked by uh, smaller ones being attacked by the Lord. When if there be any homeless animals, any homeless domestic animals out there that need home, Lord, that you would provide them a forever home, a homing, a loving home, a heavenly home, a home that will have plenty of good food and plenty of nice place for them and all to stay in that they will enjoy. Oh, dear God, now we pray for that. And, and we pray, dear God, now that you would just, just protect us all and bless us all and heal us all of anything that we may have that may be wrong and, and, and lift us in our spirits against any kind of depression or anything else and Lord dear God that you just lift us up to a high place of joy and Lord now give us a good night's rest tonight and Lord dear God bless us tomorrow and help us to have a good day of working for you and Lord just give us a blessed day a blessed evening and a blessed night and a blessed day tomorrow and Lord we ask all these things in the name of thy holy son Jesus amen amen and amen